Is Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman a worthy sequel to The Wolfman, or is it a dud? Find out today on Really Old Movies. Welcome to Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin, and today I'll be talking about Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, starring Lon Chaney Jr. and Bela Lugosi. Some essential movie details. Bela Lugosi was actually cast as Frankenstein's monster in this film, which is funny enough because early in his career at Universal, he played Dracula, which was almost a counterpart or a a rival to the Frankenstein movie because they came out about the same year starring Boris Karloff. So it's interesting seeing that Bela Lugosi ended up playing that role and never played the Dracula character again. Another essential movie detail. Lon Chaney Jr., he's the son of Lon Chaney Sr., who is famous for Fan of the Opera, London After Midnight, He Who Laughs, and several other silent films, and he's known as the Man of a Thousand Faces because he was very intense and very good at his makeup work, and so Lon Chaney Jr., he learned a lot from his dad. All right, so now I'll get to my thoughts on the film itself. The plot, I actually gave it a three out of five. I like this one more than the first wolfman movie um i don't know for some reason in this film i liked him a little bit more when he wasn't as arrogant and cocky i mean there's nothing wrong with characters that are like that but for some reason i just didn't believe that lon cheney jr was that kind of character he just didn't seem like that to me he actually fit for me fit a lot better in this type of role where he's a little you know anxious he's a little um scared i guess because and you know he he's desperate he wants to die he can't die as the wolf man because we thought he died at the end of the last one but he actually didn't and so i like that the only element i didn't like which with a lot of them is the abrupt ending it ends with like water hitting the castle and we don't know what happens does the wolf man die does the monster die from the science monster die we don't know maybe it's supposed to be a cliffhanger um i again I haven't seen all of them yet, but I don't know. I just didn't like that. It was so quick and abrupt. Um, But other than that, I liked the plot. It was great. All right. In regards to the acting, again, three out of five. Love Lon Chaney Jr. He was great. I thought, like I said earlier, a lot better in this film. And then, honestly, Bela Lugosi as Frankenstein's monster was so subtle that I didn't even... I honestly didn't even know it was him until I looked at the credits. So it was interesting seeing his kind of different way of approaching the monster versus how uh, Boris Karloff would do it. All right, in regards to the directing, gave it a two and a half out of five. Again, I just, I don't understand these abrupt endings. There are a lot of movies from this era that didn't have such quick endings, you know, like uh, a Gaslight, which didn't come out long after this movie. Uh, it doesn't have abrupt endings. Is it a universal thing? Is it a monster thing? I don't know, but I just, I can't stand it. So I don't know if I should blame the director or the studio, but I have to blame somebody. So I'm going to give it a two and a half out of five for that. All right. Cinematography, special effects, four out of five. Incredible. Love the costumes of all of them, of both the Wolfman and Frankenstein. Once again, the time lapse of when he, uh, Lon Chaney's transforming into the Wolfman is incredible. I loved it. Really liked the camera work and all of that. It was really good. And yeah, the Bela Lugosi Frankenstein monster, he doesn't look like Boris Karloff at all. But it looks like the Frankenstein monster, if that makes sense. Like the costume itself is exactly the same. Bolts in the neck, flat top head, all of that. So you know it's him. But it's a little different from the uh, Boris Karloff one. All right, in regards to the music, three out of five, nothing special, really. Uh, honestly, it's kind of hard to differentiate them, the music between each of them. It's it's a little challenging, especially the ones made in the 40s. They almost seem identical. So I don't want to give it bad points because it's not like it's terrible music. It's just it's it's almost so subtle you don't notice it. It kind of reminds me of modern movies. You know, there's a lot of movies where you hear their score, you don't remember them, like the Marvel movies, for example. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but, and that's why I give three out of five. All right. Overall, 
That brings my score to a 3.1, which I'll be rounding to a 3 out of 5. Uh, would I recommend this movie? Yeah, I would. Um, I wouldn't do it in the order I'm doing it, <laughs> which is by each of the monsters. So this, to me, is in my collection that I own, this is the second movie on the Wolfman collection. And so it's a little out of order for Frankenstein, but it's in order for the Wolfman. So I guess it really depends how you want to watch it. If you want to want it, if you want to watch it chronologically for the character, you know, watch this after the Wolfman. But if you want to watch this theatrically, then they'll have to follow the order of when they were released. So I guess it's all dependent on how you would want to see it. But it's not a bad movie. It's just it's just middle of the road. It's OK. All right. Well, those are my thoughts on the Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure to subscribe to our Instagram and Facebook at Really Old Movies, where I discuss details about the week's particular film. New podcast episodes are released Saturdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. All right. Thank you so much. This has been Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin. Take care. Thank you.